In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you two ways in which you can isolate something that's moving in a video for use elsewhere. It could be a boat, a ship, a plane, anything. In this case, I'm going to use these two gentlemen who are walking toward the camera. What I'd like to do is isolate them, and in this case, I'm going to use them as a picture-in-picture -in, -picture in another production. Let me show you the examples of these two ways, and then we'll get back to the techniques. First thing I'm going to do is take my video clip and drag it to track number one. Now, in this particular video, they move off screen. So when I get about here, the gentlemen are just about off the screen. Now, what I want to do is isolate it about that length because I'm going to be working with keyframes. And if I apply the keyframes before I split the clip, I'll have to reapply them because they won't be in the right locations. So I'm going to highlight it there, do Control T to split, highlight the second half and we'll delete it. And now we have our clip. Let's look at method number one. Method number one is using the crop zoom and pan tools. I'm going to click on the edit button with the clip highlighted. And then in the new interface, I'm going to be in the tool section, the bottom half, and choose crop zoom and pan. What I'd like to do now is I want to change the aspect ratio from 16 by 9. I'm going to use the freeform. And so I'll isolate it on these two gentlemen at the very first frame. And I have a keyframe there. So I'm going to move and we'll go to the end. And I'll set another keyframe and I'll move to the gentleman. But in this case, I'm also going to change the size. And that should be good enough. Now, I could try it with just two keyframes, but maybe it won't work. We'll find out if, if the pace is steady. So if you look in the upper right corner, you're going to see the image. And here, it's a little to the right. We'll stop it. Go right about here. We're a little bit ahead, so I'm going to click a diamond, set another keyframe. We're going to back this up just a little bit because their pace is not perfectly steady in relationship to the camera. And let's move over here and see we're ahead here as well. I'll click this and we'll slide it back. And check another place. This one looks good. Well, maybe we'll move it back just a tad. Okay, and see how it looks here. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'll, I'll stop it and we'll play the whole thing and we'll see. Does it catch them pretty good, pretty steady? Yeah, not too bad. Okay, so I'll click on OK. And one thing you will notice if you use this particular method, especially if you don't have super high resolution original footage, is the farther away they are, the smaller it is, the more grainy it will be. And so here we have the isolation of these two gentlemen in this particular shot. So we're going to focus on what they do. So that's method number one. So I can take this and render it and export it out without any problems. Let's look at method number two. We'll take the same clip drag it down and well again we're going to move to where they're just about off screen let me move back just a couple frames here about there and then I'm going to split it and delete the second half in this case what I want to do is something different so we're going to highlight the clip click on the edit again and we're, we're not going to use crop zoom and pan. We're going to use our mask designer. I'll click on that. I'm going to take a circular mask and click on that. And then we're going to isolate the two gentlemen in the first frame. 
we'll set a position and a scale value. Now one thing I like to do to see where I'm at is I'm going to drag down on the left panel and temporarily change the opacity so I can see the rest of this. Then I'm going to move to the end and we're going to move the mask and resize the mask. Again, I want it to be inside the frame so we don't have the edge cut off. And that looks pretty good. Again, we're going to have to test it to see if it's consistent. And we'll play this and see if the mask, is, yeah, the mask is getting ahead of them. We'll, we'll stop the video, move over here, and we'll back it up a bit. And it will set a position keyframe. I didn't change the scale there. Let's change, we'll go here. I think I want to back it up again just a bit. And you don't have to set a lot of keyframes in order to do this effectively, but if the pace isn't uniform between the camera and the object, you may have to tweak it like I'm doing here. Let's check one more back here. Uh, we can't see much. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, click on OK. And now when we play this, I need to turn my opacity back to 100% in a moment, but I get to see what it's doing, relationship to my guys, and that's pretty good. You could actually leave it like this if you wanted to highlight them and use the entire video as is, which is a rather interesting approach as well. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go back into my Mask Designer, and then we'll go to our settings and we'll change our opacity back to 100%. Click on OK. And so now I can use this in another project and I have this clip isolating them, focusing on them and using this for something else. Now you notice this clip moves. So as I use this in the example to start with, you have to be careful to give it a place in your final project so that you can adjust for the movement because unlike the first method, it's not stable in one place.